Welcome, Nick Delatore from Gators Online. Nick, big one in the swamp on Saturday. Tennessee comes to town. Florida, seven and a half point dog at mm -hmm. home to the ball. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I had some people text me when that, that line came out mm -hmm. and they were like, can you believe they're a seven and a half point underdog at home? I was like, yeah, I kind of can. Ugh. That's tough, Andy. <laughs> that's that's tough for, for Florida fans to hear. I went back. Um, Florida and Tennessee have played in Gainesville 21 times. Tennessee has five wins in those 21 mm -hmm. trips. The last one was in 2003, 20 years ago. Nobody snatches defeat from the jaws of victory in Gainesville quite like Tennessee, but I, I, I'm with you. Despite having seen Tennessee find new and creative, innovative ways to lose in Gainesville, I, I wouldn't look at the, uh, the men that build palaces out in the desert and say, I think you're wrong on this one. I, I was going back through with the ball quest guys, some of those various ways that mm. Tennessee has snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. We were talking about Felipe Franks to Tyree Cleveland, mm. I believe as, as one of those. And uh, what was uh, Will Greer? Who'd, who'd Will Greer hit? Will Greer to Antonio Callaway. That was Jim Antonio. McElwain walked in and I asked him, I was right. like, what's that play call called? And it was like, train right jill big ben in and i was like oh gold i don't care if that's even the real play name but thank you jim that that sounds like something you'd read in uh in one of those one of those books not like a play <laughs> one name. of those one of those yeah. books so but yeah you're right tennessee has been not just unlucky in gainesville they, they just always have they haven't always been good 2003 how old, uh, were you in high school in 2003 middle school I in was. 2003 high school <laughs> I think it was my freshman year of high school. So Casey Clawson to James Banks has no meaning to you. None. James Banks, who caught the pass, didn't throw the pass, caught the pass, the last Tennessee five-star quarterback before Nico. Wow. I, I mean, we're getting up to the point um, with, with September 11th happening this weekend. I started looking and thinking, man, there's not many guys on this roster, on either roster probably, that were alive for September 11th. Um, and then I realized Graham Mertz wasn't, but Joe Milton was, you know, and these are guys who are getting into their fifth They're year. Older, yeah. Um, so, uh, there's got freshmen on Florida's team and Tennessee's team weren't alive the last time Tennessee, uh, won in, in, in Gainesville. Now we get in trouble, you know, uh, that was Dan Mullen's first year. We always talk about the Kentucky streak and Dan, uh, probably infamously said, well, it's going to end some, sometime and it ended five <laughs> days later. So uh you know sorry sorry to all the florida fans listening to this right now so for the for the gators for these guys on this team now how important is the tennessee game for them because i i heard billy napier talk about he was telling them in the 90s it was the biggest game in the sec yeah. but i mean some of their parents were probably in high school then you know or, or it, i don't see how that would even resonate yeah, um, for me, it's it's a I don't know if you can call a you know Billy Napier's 16th game a must win game, and and I'm certainly not saying it's a must win in the sense that someone's going to get fired, but looking at the schedule and, and the last time I was on Andy, I talked to you, I was like, there's not a lot of wins in that back half of the schedule. Billy Napier was the first first year coach at Florida since Charlie Pell to lose to every rival. Um, you can't do that again. When I look at the rivalry games, Florida State looks great. Georgia's Georgia. Uh, and you have to go to LSU. Um, this one I'm probably circling as the most winnable rivalry game. You're at home. It's going to be a great crowd. I think just as a proof of concept and a continued, hey, the program's going in the right direction. That's why I think this is a must-win game for Billy Napier in Florida, just because the back end of the schedule is tough. It's it's going to get brutal um, starting in October. And, and right now you can go two and one, go to three and one. I think, you know, heading into Lexington and, and you feel certainly a lot better going into Lexington three and one with a win under over Tennessee under your belt um, than you would two and two heading heading to uh, the Bluegrass State. Now for that to happen, Florida's defense has to slow down a very, mm -hmm. very good Tennessee offense. This is Austin Armstrong's first big test as the defensive coordinator. Playing against Utah, they were playing as a backup quarterback. Lots of backups in. They still got burned on on play number one. Kind of settled down after that with uh, you know the, the trick play. They're lucky that it got it floated, but for the yeah. most part, they were solid in that game. 
and the McNeese game was the McNeese game. So we'll, we'll skip the independent of the opponent part. The opponent matters here. Yeah. How's Arsene Armstrong going to handle a defense or an offense that, that has perplexed some pretty good defensive coordinators the last few years? Well, I think you hope that Joe Milton looks like the Joe Milton of the last five years and he doesn't turn a corner in Gainesville on Saturday night. I think that's one hope. Um, the other interesting part where I think is is Austin Armstrong's going to have to get creative. Florida doesn't have a bunch of all-American, first-team, all-SEC guys on defense right now that I've seen, but they have great depth. And Florida rotates so furiously, ferociously on defense, and they keep guys fresh. A lot of what Tennessee does is not going to allow you to do that. So how do you uh, run your defense, which through two games is running guys in and out like a quickie mark? How do you adjust when, okay, well, Tennessee hasn't subbed anyone in on play seven of this drive. And now our nose tackle who weighs 425 pounds is out there staring at me like, coach, you got to get me out here before I pass out. How do you handle that as a defense? So for me, Florida, I think the, the big trick for against Tennessee is going to be stopping that running, the running back room. This, these teams kind of mirror each other, in my opinion, uh, with offensive line and you're both getting your center back this week, three running backs deep uh, in, in each room. Can Florida stop the running game, continue tackling only nine missed tackles in two games and make Joe Milton beat you with his arm. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder Subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.